Alrighty, so you're going the route of replicating. So replicating is probably the easier thing to do than trying to design freehand on your own. It's why I do it a lot. Um, someone out there already figured out what looks good. It's very easy just to utilize that and make it look the same. So in some cases, if you have a really basic design you're going for, let's say, for example, Davenport's 49 in this instance here, or this 22, um, you might not need to fully sit here and replicate out a design. However, something a little bit more advanced like this, um, or this, maybe you might want to actually sit here and trace through. So in an instance like with this Davenport car, um, we can see that it's just kind of got a basic black line that then goes up, and then the blue line follows, and then the same thing up here. And so in an instance like this, what I might do is uh, get ourselves a white body color base, create a new layer directly above it, and then either eyedropper the blue or utilize uh, some of these sliders to get a, a blue that I feel is more accurate. And then now I'm going to go in and create my lines. So for example, in this instance with Davenport, I'm going to draw a line across here with the line tool, and then I can use these draggers to create that curve in the car. And so I think it's about there. And then the same thing with the bottom edge. So putting that line there and creating this line here. And once again, using our line uh, circle draggers to create the curvature. And so we can actually see the curve is kind of a sharp one. So what you do with this is you just bring these dots closer together and you'll get a sharper curve. And so now I've created the blue section. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer with this button here. And then I can drag each of these pieces into place for the black line. So about there. All the while, I'm just kind of eyeballing, trying to get the right gap. That seems fine to me there. And then lastly, this one here. Now, in this instance, you can see I didn't draw the blue line long enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the lasso tool here to cut out a chunk of this. And then I will copy and paste it and then just try to move it in until it looks like the anti-aliasing uh, dots there are lining up correctly. And now I'm all set. And so now how I'm going to make this blue line into a black line is we're going to black and white it. And then it's not quite dark enough, so going into brightness and contrast, I'm just bringing the brightness down. And now I've got my black lines. And now we're gonna go back and fill in the blue. So for filling in the blue, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the lasso tool again. I'm going to click down here at the top of this and then lasso around like so. And then now holding down control, I'm using the lasso tool again. I'm going to go in the line here and then lasso down and around to get all of that. Then do the same thing across this straight line here. And then do the same thing with this curve up here. And the reason why I'm going through the middle of this line here is because now we're going to go into the paint bucket tool. And I don't want to end up having um, a bit of like kind of overspraying uh, of this. So for example, if I just click this once, you can see that little bit of, uh, or I do want to overspray, I should say. I don't want to underspray. You can see that white dotted dash line. And so to cover that up, uh, we just keep clicking again and it will go away. And so holding down shift will allow you to color all at once in all of the areas. So for example, uh, if I hold down shift here, you can see I do all the red. If I hold down shift and click, I do all the blue. And so uh, you can actually see doing the red kind of cause a little bit of that dot 
the line. But as you can see, with a very simple car with like the Davenport car, you might just do it real quickly freehand it. Um, and the same thing would happen for a car like this, where you know it's just a red, gold, black, and then red. So for example, to do that, um, oh, and I suppose real quick I will show. Uh, what I would do with a Davenport car like this, I would then merge the two layers down, select all of this, paste it into a new image, use the image flip horizontal, and then bring the new elements back in like so. Um, and that's how I'd get it on like the other side of the car. And then for example, for this very basic style of red, gold, black, red, um, what I would do personally is I would create very skinny lines like so. So red, and then bring this over and do gold. And then do black. And then do red. And now that I have my lines, what I'd want to do is I'll copy this. And then I will tilt it at an angle. A little bit too much angle. And then now I have that there. And then once again, we can lasso tool our way around here to get the fill. And that's how I do a real basic design like that. So not really needing a whole lot of tracing over for design when it's really basic. Now, once we get into a harder design, like something like this, we might want to start getting into tracing. So I'm going to crop down the image to just the design that we're looking at. And then I will resize it to be very large. Uh, so for example, in this case, I'm doing 5,000 pixels. And then now we just get into tracing it out. So for example, let's say I want to get into this turquoise part here. I'm going to eyedropper the turquoise part as long as I actually want it to be turquoise. And this part right here, you could uh, change the color to a different color, or you could wait till the end and change the color. And then what I would do uh, if I am using the same color as the thing that it is to help me figure out that I've already drawn over it, I'm going to actually invert the colors. And now I just need to remember what that other color is. So for example, in this case, it's this lightish red. I'm going to create a new layer. And now with the new layer, I'm going to use the line tool to start drawing some lines in. And in this case, you're just going to try to mark your line to go exactly over where the line shows up on the image that you're trying to replicate. And sometimes with these curves, you just need to try to find where the circles need to sit to do it perfectly. And then I'm going to cap it off like that. And so I'd go through the whole car doing this, um, but I won't bore too much with doing that. Um, so the other like big line I would want to do just to show is something like, like this one. So this one has a bit too much curvature going on for me to be able to replicate like that piece all that well. So what I would actually do in this case is I would actually segment it. So for example, I'm really focused on trying to get this curve correct, right? And then I leave that end piece off like so. I'm going to draw from this piece and then utilize the curve lines to try to match up something that looks like it matches into that piece there. Um, and then when I get into the wheel well here, I'm just going to cap this off. And then once again, same thing over here. And the reason I'm doing this is because rather than lassoing out like we did before, um, so 
Um, and we need to handicap this piece. So this piece, I can't really be certain what exactly is happening here behind the number. My guess is that it's going to this piece over here. So we would continue drawing that out. But I'm going to show a different thing here uh, instead. So let's say that we want to end this off with a point, kind of like what this one does right down here. What we want to do is um, find a place where the, the line continues on and comes to a point. And to do that, what we're going to want to do is grab this piece here, for example, and then find the place where I can create a pointed line that's just going straight for the edge. And we'll keep doing this until we feel like it's been done all the way through the line above it. And in this case, I didn't draw this line far enough, so we can move that out and over like that. Now at this point, we've kind of created a much larger version of the line that we're looking for. So we will continue doing that. And in this particular case, we have a straight line. So what we can actually do is we can map it through like this. And then now we're just going to take the eraser tool and erase through that line there. And now we get a nice sharp point. Now we're gonna come back and we're going to grab this and we're going to paint bucket it. And then as far as getting the fill of the shape itself, what we're going to want to do here is use our magic wand tool to get this fill in here. We're going to create a layer underneath, and I'm going to fill that in like so. And now we're going to unselect it, and now we're going to paint bucket it again until those lines go away. And then sometimes you might have like a little bit of cleanup left in the corners. So just go back with the paint bucket, or sorry, the paint brush, and cover that in. And there you go, now we have this whole shape. And now uh, we need to do this white layer in here. So as we can see, I did not get this line off the edge, so we just go like that. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing that we just did for filling that shape. We're going to make a layer underneath and I'm going to fill it with white. And then once again, I'm just going to click a few more times to cause it to feather out into the line area so you don't really see it anymore. And so you would continue through this process doing the entire design of the car. And then once you're happy with the entire design, um, I would usually still save it in this layered format that you have because you can go back later and edit it. So for example, uh, we want to combine these two turquoise layers, and then I would label them turquoise via the little wrench icon, and then you can name them so you can remember what they are. But the reason why it's good to be able to have everything in layers is, let's say I want to change this turquoise to something else. The easiest way to do that uh, is typically considered just paint bucketing. But the problem with paint bucketing is you get the feathering from the paint bucket. Now the way to fix this is that you can turn off the anti-aliasing with the paint bucket and then click, but then you don't actually get all the turquoise. You can see there's some turquoise pieces being left behind. So instead, the easiest way to actually do this the right way is to go into adjustments and hue and saturation. And with hue and saturation, we can go through and we can change the color of everything. And we'll change all the pixels in the same amount so we can keep a very consistent color, but also not have any weird edges going on. And we can change the saturation as well, and we can change the lightness and darkness as well. So that's a good reason to keep it in layers. The other uh, thing is generally keeping things like in grayscale, white, grays, blacks, uh, can be tough because you won't be able to hue and saturation that. So for example, if we have white, changing the hue doesn't do anything because white doesn't have any hue. Saturation, same issue. The only thing that will change is the lightness and darkness. So in cases like that, maybe you wanna also save it in a colored format. 
um, you know, anything that's supposed to be white or black or whatever, you can always change a colored uh, piece of it into white or black or whatever by going into uh, black and white and then using brightness to change that. Um, and then we can also up the contrast to get closer to white or get more into a gray. So you can move those around to get the desired grayscale color. So that's how you would go about uh, doing some replicating. And then once you are all done with replicating it via tracing, what you're going to want to do is turn off the layer that you were using to draw from. And then we're going to select our section here. And now we're going to hit Control Shift F, which is going to flatten all the layers into one layer. And now I'm going to copy this. And then I usually Control Z back uh, just so I remember to keep the layer and I don't accidentally save it while it's still flat. Um, and now we're going to paste this whole chunk into a new image because it needs to be on its own. And then now we're going to go back to our main car image and I'm going to check what the length of this section is. So for example, right now we can see it's 15, 18. Um, and I'm having a little bit of the wheel wells involved. Uh, and I, I didn't actually draw this design out to the back of the car. So we actually need to check from probably about here to about here, which is only about 920. And then I usually will go a little bit over. So 920, I'm gonna do a thousand instead. Uh, in the resize, that's what I was doing there. Um, and now we're going to copy and paste this over and in. And then we bring it down and we line it up the way we want. And I notice uh, it maybe could be a little bit longer, so we just drag it to be a little bit longer. And now we have that design that I just created onto the car. And then after I get it nicely seated on one side of the car, very similarly to the Davenport car, we're going to copy and paste that and then flip it and then redrag it back in. So now that you've created your design, um, there is a few more things that we can do with it and I will show that in another video. But this is at least how you can get some basic designs um, or some really complex ones if you want to put in the time and effort via tracing over real designs.